Hey everybody, I'm Ben Piersma from bensbackwoods.com. Um, I wanted to put together some axe videos for you to help you choose a bush axe and safe and efficient use of a bush axe. Uh, the first group of axes I want to talk about, these are axes that we sell and axes that we use, are the 19 inch axes. Um, this is the smallest axe that I would consider a bush axe, that's my opinion. Um, the, the, the best purpose, the best use for these axes are probably uh, because of their size and, and how lightweight they are and how portable they are um, for a day pack, for um, hiking. Um, this is probably, you know, this is one size bigger than your average hatchet, uh, but this 19 inch axe will, it's got a big enough handle so you can get two hands on it and you can really do uh, some chopping with it. Um, and these axes, a lot of you guys are familiar with the Grandsworth and the Wetterlings. Um, I'm also selling these Baco axes. Uh, this Baco axe is a pound and three quarter head. This is a pound and a half head, and this is a pound and a half head. Uh, there's no magic here. The heavier axe will do more work. This axe has got a pound and three quarter head. Uh, it'll outwork both these two axes just because of the weight. Um, these axes, they don't thin them out quite as much as the Grantsfords and the Wetterlings, which I find makes them split better. And with the extra weight on it, they chop just as well, if not better. All right, these uh, 26 inch axes <coughs> are the next size up over the 19s. These make nice bush axes and they're a little heavier. Um, they're still lightweight enough to carry them in a pack. Uh, it's probably not something you carry in a day pack or, or in warm weather in the summer, but um, they're still packable. Um, Grandsworth is a pound and three quarter head. Wetterlings is a pound and three quarter head. Uh, the Baco is a two and a quarter pound head. Um, the heavier head, will do more work. Um, and once again, these aren't thinned out quite as much. Uh, you can sharpen them up to where you have your first inch of the blade is uh, plenty thin for chopping. And then they still they still split well. Um, I really like this. This this two and a quarter pound head um, will do a lot of work. Uh, the next size ax we have that I really like, uh, that I'd still consider a bush ax, would be this Gransfer's American Felling Ax. This is uh, 31 inch handle, three and a quarter pound head. Uh, this is on the, the large size of bush axes. This would be considered a compact, full size axe though. Um, like I said, there's no magic. The bigger axe head will do more work. This will do more work than all these axes together. Uh, so if you really need to work with an axe all day long, um, your best bet is to choose the biggest axe that you can. And that'd be my advice for anybody trying to choose an axe. Choose the biggest axe. Uh, that you feel comfortable carrying with you. The biggest axe is going to do the most work. We're going to talk about the fit and finish of an axe and your expectations on an axe when you buy an axe. Um, axe an axe is a heavy duty chopping tool. It's not made like a custom built knife. Um, these Gransfer's axes probably have the highest fit and finish that you can get on an axe. Uh, even the Gransfer's will not be perfect. Um, a lot of guys want to have an axe that the head is aligned in with the handle and that the, the handle grain gives you parallel handle grain. Uh, quite a few Gransfer's are really nice. There's some that aren't perfect. Uh, what I found is honestly, it's you're probably not going to notice a whole lot of it when you're using it. Uh, Wetterlings is pretty decent fit and finish. The Baco is not quite as nice a fit and finish, but like I said, um, I've used, I've seen brand new straight grained axes, the handles blow apart, and I've used axes with cross grain and, and uh, misaligned heads, used them for years and didn't have any trouble with it. When the, if your head is uh, uh, misaligned a quarter inch, you're not going to notice it because when you're chopping and you miss what you're chopping at, you, you readjust, you're not sighting down the head. So in an ideal world, yes, we want the the, uh, the blade aligned with the center of the handle, straight down the center there. Um, and we'd like to have parallel grain in the handle running back and forth like this. Um, but if you don't have that, it's no big deal. Uh, the axe is still gonna be great. Uh, part of owning an axe is learning how to replace the handle down the road. And what you do is you look for your own straight grained handle and you mount the head the way you want it on your axe and, uh, and there you have it. <laughs> 